Bande Ham Shri Guru Shri Jatahapada Kamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvoitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamscha Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Mukam Kuroti Vajalam Pangum Langayate Girim Yat Kripa Tamaham Bande Shri Gurun Dinataranam <coughs> Vancha Kalpa Tarubhyas Cha Kripa Sindhu Bhya Eva Cha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Namo Maha Vajanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gaura Chise Namaha Hey Krishna, <coughs> Karana Sindho, Dina Bandho, Jagatapate, Gopesha Gopika Kanta, Radha Kanta Namostude, Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi, Radhe Vrindavaneshwari, Vrishabhanu Sute Devi, Pranamami Hari Priye. <coughs> Brindai Tulsi Devai Priyai Keshavasya Cha Krishna Bhakti Prade Devi Satyavachai Namo Namaha Panchatatvatmakam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Swarupakam Bhakta Avataram Bhaktakyam Namami Bhakta Shakti Kam Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shivas Adi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare <clears throat> First of all, I'm offering my Koti Koti Dandavat Pranams at the lotus feet of my most worshipable beloved Guru Dev, Nitilila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa, Ashtatarasata Sri Srila, AC Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada. And then I'm offering my same unlimited Dandavat Pranams. My Shraddha Pushpanjali, at the lotus feet of my most worshipable beloved Sikh Shagura Devs. Nityalila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad, Paramahansa Astatarasata Sri Shila, Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Goswami Maharaj, and Nityalila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad, Paramahansa Astatarasata Sri Shila, Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. <clears throat> and I'm offering my Dandavat Pranams to all of my Sri Rupa Nuka Guru Varga and my Dandavat Pranams to all the Vaishnavas and all the Vaishnavis. <clears throat> <clears throat> so we're continuing today with our reading of there's some kind of echo in the setting our reading of Srila Satyadananda Bhakti Vinod Thakur's commentary on two verses of Sri Upadesha Amrita the second and third shlokas 
And we're on the third shloka where he has written one chapter, one essay for each one of the six favorable activities for bhakti. And this is a little bit of a long section because he's uh, actually commenting on the tat karma pravartana, which means to do all activities that are favorable for bhakti. And what is more favorable for bhakti than the limbs of bhakti themselves? Uh, that is, that's what it means to do things that are favorable for bhakti. So there's a list given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Rupa Goswami, and Rupa Goswami has given it to the whole world. And our Prabhupada gave it to the Krishna consciousness movement in the very beginning, and he published the Nectar of Devotion, where Rupa Goswami is commenting on the 64 limbs of bhakti. So we're in a section right now that, uh, like the last, last, he's not actually giving numbers to these, but what he's doing is he's reading, or he is presenting, there was the first 10 principles, then there's the second 10, which are at mainly activities that are, should be given up on the path of bhakti. So, like for example, yesterday, sadness. Sadness is to be cast off. That's one principle. Then the worship of very various demigods and goddesses is prohibited. It is Sri Krishna alone who is to be worshipped. Is sadness even lamentation? Yeah. Shokamar Shadi Bir Vavaya. How can Mukund, Sri Mukunda ever be manifest to a person whose heart is in, invaded by lamentation, anger, and other agitations? So we read that little section there. And then you know, concerning the worship of demigods and demigoddesses, that only Sri Krishna he is to be worshipped. Now we, we completed that section. I'd like to reread every section because there's so much, so much in each section. Now, the next point that's being made is that one should not cause anxiety for anyone. Hmm? Yeah, for anyone. So, now Bhaktivinoda Thakur is saying, one should be merciful towards every living entity, not giving even the slightest anxiety to anyone. <clears throat> it is necessary that one's heart be full of compassion for all. It is necessary. If it's not, which in most cases, the neophyte devotees don't have, but they have some. But it is very necessary. Exhibiting a mood of mercy toward all living entities is a limb of Krishna Bhakti. It's actually a limb of Krishna Bhakti. So we can kind of liken, like the biblical text, you know, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind, and you should love thy neighbor as thyself. Well, Bhakti, you know, dying to love thy fellow man and give thyself to God. Yes, dying to love thy fellow man and give thyself to God. So it is a limb of bhakti, actually, to have compassion, mercy, and trying not to cause even the slightest anxiety to anyone. So, we can try for this. We should try for this because he's saying it is necessary. It is necessary that one's heart be full of compassion for all. This is mentioned in many songs of Bhakti Vinod Thakur's, like Kabe Habe Bolo Se Din Amar, 
When will I give up all of my... Uh, all of my compassion for all fallen souls now that this is done? Yes, but he says also, when will I give up my own concern for myself? Mm. And by the mercy of Nityananda, embrace the mood of compassion for all living entities and set out to preach the divine command of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, this is necessary because if we want to become pure devotees, uh, their nature is told in that nice pranam mantra to the Vaishnavas, that their nature is full of mercy. Huh? What is that verse? Vancha kalpataru vyascha. <laughs> that to become a kalpataru, a tree that doesn't ever more tolerant than a tree, right? Tarara pisahishnana. Right? But to be a wish fulfilling tree on top of it. Huh? That's the Vaishnavas. They just want to give so much to all living entities without any motivation at all and tolerating tolerating so much and uh, Kripa Sindhu right to become an entire ocean of mercy means well, why Sindhu because no end the mercy is limitless and patitanam parvanebhya, saving the fallen souls, being, becoming the savior of the fallen souls. It's all right there. So to attain, exhibiting a mood of mercy toward all living entities, it is a limb of Krishna Bhakti, and to attain this nature, a sadhak should carefully cultivate the quality of mercy. We have to pay attention to it, in other words. We have to consciously try to cultivate that quality. And nam aparad. So, Bhaktivinoda Thakur is saying, because it is imperative to give up seva aparad and Ten nam aparads. So it is most essential for those desiring to do bhajan to give up seva aparads, offenses in service, and the ten kinds of nam aparads, offenses to harinam. <clears throat> for <clears throat> devotees in general, there are a number of rules for serving the deity form of Bhagavan. Seva aparad is committed when those rules are transgressed. Hence, one must avoid committing seva aparad upon entering the temple room. There are ten kinds of nam aparad that have been discussed in many places. All sadhakas ought to be extremely careful to give up these offenses. Every endeavor in sadhana bhajan by those who are negligent in this regard is useless. That's a pretty straightforward statement that every endeavor in sadhana bhajan done by those who are negligent in this regard is useless. So the Padma Purana says, Sarva parada kridapi muchyate hari samshraya harer apya paradhanya kuryad dvipada pamshana. Here we have dvipada pamshana. Take a guess what that means. Dvipada. Two footed <laughs> Yes. Two legged animal. So, mm, then there's another verse quoted. 
nam ashraya kadachit syat tarat yeva sanamata nam no hi sarva suhrido kya paradhat patatyadha the conclusion these two verses he's not giving a direct translation of them but the conclusion is <clears throat> that if one takes shelter of Sri Hari, then all types of offenses are vanquished. If one takes shelter of Sri Hari, then all types of offenses are vanquished. All seva aparads committed while serving Bhagavan are destroyed by taking shelter of Sri Nam. Nam alone delivers the Vaishnavas. But, there's a but, on the condition that they give up all kinds of offenses. Mm -hmm. So Nam alone delivers the Vaishnavas. Uh, it, can, it can save you from all seva aparads that are committed by taking shelter of Sri Hari Nam and taking shelter of Sri Hari all types of offenses are vanquished. So, Nam alone delivers the Vaishnavas, but on the condition that they give up all kinds of offenses. If they do not, they will surely fall down, despite chanting the name of Bhagavan. Yeah. So how does that sit with you, all of you? Yeah. Tell me your reflections on what we just heard. I wake up tomorrow with a new mind. <laughs> what do you think? So, about giving up all the fences, like. Well, yeah, just what we heard here. Yeah. Anything registered? Yeah, I mean, it makes me think of like, wow, that's that's such a difficult thing to do because we're always doing offenses on some level or another. So. I guess to have some sincerity when we, when we chant and pray for mercy that we come to that stage of not making offenses. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. Praying to the Holy Name to free us from these very things, mm -hmm. which are praying through the medium of our spiritual master. Mm -hmm. so these things can be removed, which block us from that realm. if one is negligent, so that to me means that you have to be very attentive and careful while you're doing any kind of seva for <coughs> like right. Shri Vigraha or chanting mm -hmm. Holy Name. It has to yeah. be a real mood of care and attention. Yes. We often hear how the pathway of spiritual life, there's one shloka talking about how it's like a razor's edge. Uh, we've heard that from the early days. And then sometimes <clears throat> we've heard an explanation of that in the sense that when you're shaving with a razor, you have to be careful because you can also cut. So, yeah, so the pathway of spiritual life requires um, sincere, heartfelt lamentation for committing all of, of offenses. Mm -hmm. That has to be there. We have to have that regret. Otherwise, why have our acharyas expressed that in their songs? Mm -hmm. So, we have to each day pray. There are so many prayers, actually. You know, <clears throat> let me see if I can remember the prayer of Rupa Goswami in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Uh, Matsamo nasti papatma na paradhi chakaschana parihare pi lajjame kim bruve purushottama. So here Rupa Goswami. Actually, you know what? This is Srila Sridhar Maharaj in his Sri Guru and his grace. He, he gave in the final chapter, I 
think it was in the final chapter, the line of Sri Rupa, where he quoted these five verses. Like vigyapti, I think it's called. Regret. Uh, so the first one, of there's a group of five verses there. I used to say them uh, when I first learned the offering prayers and the procedures and everything. There are five prayers that are said uh, before offering the robe. And then after the offering is completed, then there are five prayers that are said to ask forgiveness for offenses committed. Okay? So this is the first verse in that sequence of five verses. And what the verse is telling <coughs> is that Rupa Goswami is saying, Mat samo nasti papatma. There is no sinner equal to me. Matsamo nasti papatma. No sinner equal to me. Then he says, Na aparati cha kaschana. Neither is there any aparadi, any offender equal to me. Then he says, Parihare pi lajja me. He's saying, O Purushottam, Parihare pi lajja me kim bruve Purushottama. Kim bruve Purushottama. He says, he's saying, what can I do? O Purushottama, O Krishna, what can I do? Huh? I'm, I'm even ashamed to come before you. Lajja means shame. Jai Shri Shri Guru Gauranga Radha Govinda Ji Ki Jai So Kim Bruve Purushottama He's speaking in this way. What can I do? Even I'm ashamed to come before you, O oh my Lord. But you know what he says in the next verse? Bhumo skalitapadanam, bhumir eva valambanam, twai jata paradhanam, twai jata paradhanam. No, I can't remember the last line right now. But the meaning of this one, because he's saying, I'm even ashamed to come before you and even to admit this to you, my Lord. Because this is my real condition. But what other recourse do I have? Is there any other recourse? And then he says in this verse, Bhumo skalitapadana. When someone slips and falls as they're walking onto the earth, Bhumir eva avalambanam. The earth now becomes your support. Right? So in the same way, in order to raise yourself up from the earth again, you have to use the earth as your support. So twai jata paradhanam. Yeah, something. I'm taking shelter of you in the same way. Uh, oh, Purushottam. Because you're my only recourse. And then, there's the verse... With, where Srila Sridhar is explaining, then there is another change in his mood and his consciousness at this stage. And then he prays to Krishna. He says, something is awakening in me. Yuvati nam yata yuni yuvam yuvati nam yata yuni yuvam cha yuvatam Mano viramate yatavat mano me ramatam tvai. So this is quoted in many different contexts. But now, after admitting his condition as an aparadi, as sinful, and, and having no other recourse than the Lord, but there's something more. What is that? 
There's something awakening in me, an attraction towards you, oh my Lord. There's an attraction towards you. Just as yuvatinam <clears throat> yata you know. Young boys are attracted to young girls, and young girls are attracted to young boys. In that same way, I want that my attraction will be towards you, O my Lord. Then he prays, Govinda Balabe Radhe. Huh? Govinda Balabe Radhe. Govinda Balabe Radhe. Pratayam. I'm going to look this up because my brain is not working. Govinda Balabe Radhe. Pratayam. Iham. Aham Sada. Sadiyam. Iti jana tu govindo man tvayasaha. That's it. So, I am praying to you, O Govinda Balabe Radhe, O you Radhe, who are Balaba of Govinda, Govinda Balabe Radhe. Prarte tvam aham sada. I'm always praying to you, Prartam. Hmm? Tadiya iti jana tu. Govindo man tvaya saha. Tadiya, you know, you've heard this before. Tadiya means that which is dear to you, right? That which is related to you, tadiya. So tadiya iti jana tu. I, I'm praying to you, O Radhe, who are so most, most beloved of Govinda. Huh? I'm always praying, sada. To you, that tadiyam iti jana tu. Please accept me as your very own. And govindo man tvaya saha. Along with you and your govinda, accept me uh, as tadiyam mahyam pradiyatam. So please be merciful to me. Kripaya nija padabja, your very own lotus feet. Kripaya uh, nija padabja dasyam mahyam radiyata. Please give unto me the service of your lotus feet. So see how these five verses by Rupa Goswami. But it begins with admittance that. I am the greatest, most sinful person, and I am the greatest offender. But I have no other recourse than you, my Lord. So, uh, just as the earth enables one to pick oneself up again, it's the only way that I can redeem myself is through your mercy. Mm. Mm. Raj, I'm approach this subject. So in the course of doing seva chanting, mm -hmm. uh, or in the course that the spiritual master specifically gives, especially if he gives, let's say, administrative duties and has you out in the world and everything, mm -hmm. what I've found and what I've seen is that everything can go fine, easy, you know, one who's simple hearted, just do seva, but then there's the tests. Yeah, especially in the Western world, you go out and you're given, you know, responsibilities or something to do, and <clears throat> everything you thought that was very simple and easy, you know, becomes now so many tests might come one's way. One might be proud, thinking, "Oh, this is easy. I can do all this. I can perform seva without offense. You know, so easy, or I can, you know, exist." Uh, in in my duty to my spiritual master, but then, it's, especially in the movement, I've seen it's outrageous things come that you know where one is tested, it's and then the, 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 <laughs> this is Krishna's mercy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you think, oh yes, I'm above Maya, but then you realize Maya is very intricately and 
forward or anything. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can be given situations and choices where what you think uh, in the past was a very simple right and wrong becomes very confusing what path to take. You know? mm-hmm. And so uh, then if one does make mistakes and falls down, then I can see that this mood can then arise. Oh, I had some pride before, but now I realize I'm completely dependent on you know a higher mercy to get me through this life and course um, and be liberated. It's not so easy that I thought. It's something where you know tests can be very different. So is that just a, a statement? A or? statement that yeah. if the devotee is going through is is saying you know, with all this yeah. regret i mean the regrets not artificial mm-hmm. it's not artificial it's not that they're just pretending oh yes i feel very regretful of course one can think i'm in this material world some past lives i must have done something to end up with the material body mm-hmm. so there can be the regret for even having been in this material world at all but usually i guess this should be more of a question is that who is actually go through things where they're tested and fall. And then that's when they can have this sincere feeling of, of regret. Otherwise, how does it come? And how does one then have a sincere appeal? You know, if one's just thinking that, oh, everything is, you know, fine. <laughs> it's, no, it's something where you have to have emotion and call out because you've been put through ringers. You don't have to be in the present for it. We have previous sunspots, at least I do, like in driving up a wall. And that makes you pull up in some kind of, you know, it doesn't have to be like I'm suddenly in the middle of the world and there's opulence and oh my God, where did this one come from? And it's, uh, it, I don't remember if Prabhupada calls it the age of necessity. That's, you want to come to that place where you're desperate. Is that what you were saying? Well, I was just saying, how is the devotees, it's an, uh, this call for feeling regret and everything, it's coming from a real place. It's not something mm-hmm. invented. It's something that the devotee knows by experience. Now, usually at in initiation, you feel, okay, well, clean bill of health. <laughs> I've been initiated, there's no more past the spiritual master is wiped clean. But then from there, you know, everything's easy for the first few years, especially if you just have simple seva and, and you're performing it. But, mm-hmm. you know, 10, 20, 30 years you get, you get involved in a lot of uh, situations mm-hmm. where it becomes very confusing. You know, what is the right course of action? Yeah. You know, because what you... Let me uh, give a little comment on what you were telling about. Um, I remember back in the Brooklyn Temple, 73, 74, and struggle was going on in my spiritual life at that time. Not that it doesn't continue, but in particular, I remember that time period. And you know, I was working at the press, ISKCON Press, doing layout work, usually for like a couple of hours, two, three hours in the afternoons, you know. And uh, we used to be hearing tapes of Srila Prabhupada, his lectures. Yeah, we used to be hearing his lectures. Uh, and I remember one day, They had put on a lecture, I think it was, I don't remember the verse, but it was like the second chapter of the first canto, Divinity and Divine Service, so many important verses there. And I remember Srila Prabhupada, he was explaining that in the beginning, when one comes to Krishna, then he gives some special mercy, some concession he gives, you know, uh, for that devotee. But after some time, then Krishna begins to test the devotee. 
to put him through certain tests. And here's the important part of what I'm remembering what Prabhupada said. He said, Krishna will test the devotee to see. Have you come to enjoy me? Or have you come to serve me? That's what Krishna is testing to see. Very simple thing, isn't it? But have you come to enjoy me? Or have you come to serve me? And I think all of the devotees' lives are going to go through that test, no doubt about it. And it will continue to go on because it is by that process that Krishna purifies us. Uh, did, did not Srila Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, uh, I'm sure you remember hearing about his lecture talking about the fire of ordeal. Remember that? The fire of ordeal. And you know, it's like um, a blacksmith. Mm -hmm. That example has been definitely given. Of how the blacksmith heats up the iron rod. You know, heats up the iron rod. Very, very hot till it's red hot. And then he begins to pound it with the blacksmith's hammer. But what does that do? What does the pounding do of that iron rod? It removes the alloys. You know, that's the process that iron is gradually turned into shiny, purified steel, which is very hard. See? So, there has to be the heating and the beating. Both have to be there for that iron to be turned into steel, right? Now, we don't necessarily need to look at this process as being nothing but suffering, no. Because the objective of Krishna is to bring about the mood of surrender to him. He wants that. He wants that his jiva will give himself to Krishna uh, by surrendering. So as one begins to surrender, every devotee will experience that this mood of becoming obedient, becoming submissive, becoming attentive, all of these endeavors of the jiva to be a sincere devotee, a sincere servant of Guru, of Krishna, of Vaishnavas. This mood is watched by Krishna in the heart. He's always watching. And he knows exactly. <laughs> this is the thing about Krishna. Huh? He knows everything. Past, present, future. He knows every living entity. He knows everything. So the thing about Krishna is that He's all good, and he can make the most perfect arrangement for every single jiva. Jai Shri Shri Radha Govinda Ki Jai. He can make the most perfect arrangement that we could never even have dreamed about in our life to bring this about, but it requires from our side that we want him that we're here to serve him despite our disqualifications, despite our past samskaras, despite everything that we have come to show Krishna. Yes, I want to be your servant. I don't want to be the enjoyer. I want to give that up. Yes, I'm sinful. Yes, I'm an aparadi. But I want my connection with you so please purify me. It is okay. You can send as much punishment as you want. Bhaktivinoda Thakur talks about that quite often. The desire to be punished by the Lord. Is he? the Dhamma also pounded on the anvil of material nature. Ah, there. <laughs> yes. 
So the devotees who have some experience, they've made a sincere endeavor, they will all be able to tell their own story of, and reflect how Krishna did this for me. I have my story, you have yours. I love to hear those stories of the devotees. And it's still not finished, but there are some good chapters there that Krishna put us through such and such to bring about the necessary qualities in us. You know, Gurudev has spoken about this, that our suffering and our enjoyment, according to that verse, you know, Tatenu Kampam Susamikshamano Bunjana Ivatna Kritam Vipakam. Actually, that is not due to our past karmas. Gurudev was quizzing Satsrup Maharaj. I remember that little booklet. Did you ever see that little booklet? That Satsrup Maharaj kept a diary of the days around 1991 when he was staying in the same house with Gurudev in Vrindavan. He later tried to get rid of it, but we already had it. So some, someone has it somewhere, you know. Um, I've even downloaded it, but I don't know where it is now. But he was talking day by day by day about his very um, powerful experience being with Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Maharaj. And he was having daily conversations with him. And one time Srila Gurudev asked him, can you give the, the translation of this verse, Tatenu Kampam Sumikshamano? So Satsang Maharaj, you know, he, he gave his uh, translation of that verse that he had learned from Srila Prabhupada. It's also the nectar of devotion, you know, how, uh, you know, how by tolerating uh, past act, uh, reactions for one's past activity, always desiring the mercy of the Lord, uh, and try to surrender with body, mind, words, then the kingdom of God becomes your inheritance. Dayavak, you know. So when he gave that explanation, then Gurudev said to him, he says, yes, this is actually the general. Is this the general translation? Because he was saying one's own past activities. Right? Because that's, that's in that verse. Bunjana uh, evatma kritam. Atma kritam means I have done it. Atma kritam. So, meaning that these sufferings that are coming or the enjoyments, they are coming as a result of my own actions in the past, which means my karma. But Gurudev said, that is a general understanding. But Gurudev then began to give the deeper purport of the Gaudiya Vaishnavacharyas that, no, this is not your past karma. The devotee will think and feel that way, but actually it is not. Because that has already been, as one took up the pathway of bhajan, chanting the holy names, that has been removed already. What is going on is Krishna directly is giving he may utilize what was supposed to be there by one's karma, but he may not also utilize that. He's arranging for the devotee to develop certain qualities. You see, moods, moods and qualities, which is about your question or your statement. That's what Krishna will do for every single devotee. Every single devotee will have to go through the fire of ordeal you know, but it's not just karma. It's not just karma. What is it? Krishna's mercy. That's what we're told in this verse. Tate anukampa. Anukampa means mercy. So he goes on, always, always seeing everything as the mercy of the Lord. That's what Srila Sridhar Maharaj gives his purport, embracing the environment as being favorable because it's Krishna's mercy. You see, this practically speaking, it's the most important lesson that any of us will have to learn and each and every devotee will have to learn it. And if he's not diligent and 
sincere enough in this life, uh, he'll have to go in the next life and learn the lesson. Or the next one after that. But no one will get to this level of pure bhakti without surrender. Sharanagati. So this is why Srila Bhakti Rukshak Sridharmar, so many times he said, if you just focus and you concentrate on surrender, then everything else will come. He said, everything else will come. All development of bhakti and everything. If you just f focus on surrender. So that's why Bhakti Thakur wrote that entire book, the songbook, Sharanagati. And the first song in that book is what? No. No. The first song is um, we sing it. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Jive Doya Kori Saparshada Sviya Dhamma Saha Avatari Adyanta Dura Lava Prema Kori Baridan Shikai Sharanagati Bhagatera Pran. So Mahaprabhu, he says, being merciful to all the jivas, uh, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Jive Doya Kori, wanting to give doya, mercy to all the jivas. Svaparshada Sviyadama Saha Avatari. He descended from Goloka Vrindavan with his eternal associates and his dham. Then, Atyanta Durlava Prema. Atyanta Durlava Prema means extremely rare praying. Atyanta Durlava Prema Kori Varidan. In order to give this extremely rare praying, Shikaye Sharanagati Bhagatera Pran. He instructed the jivas in Sharanagati. And this is the very life and soul of the bhaktas. So then, he mentions the six limbs of Sharanagati, right? And then he says, Jahara Prartana Shune Srinanda Kumar. He says, those who execute these six limbs of Sharanagati, right? Then the son of Maharaj Nanda himself. He hears their prayers. He hears because of that mood. So this pathway, it is, it is Krishna himself rescuing the jiva, giving the jiva whatever is needed. And we all have our packages in this life, our own packages. No one else can handle our package except for us. And Krishna is giving that for us, for a very specific, like you mentioned the letter that I got from Prabhupada. Krishna, he's trying to make you turn towards him more and more. See? That's all. This is what Krishna wants. So although this good discussion here is talking about the razor's edge, right? That... All seva aparads committed while serving Bhagavan are destroyed by taking shelter of Sri Nam. Nam alone delivers the Vaishnavas. It's Krishna in the form of Nam, how the Vaishnavas are being delivered, but on the condition that they give up all kinds of offenses. On that condition. Huh? And if they do not, if they do not, they will surely fall down despite chanting the name of Bhagavan, because Nama Parad, too much, too much Nama Parad. So, sincerity, that's why Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Maharaj has told, sincerity is invincible. Mm. Right? Yes. So our Arctic time has come, even though I came a bit early today, Still, the time has run out. <laughs> Very nice. So, we'll read tomorrow about refraining from criticizing Vaishnavas and Vishnu and taking shelter of the lotus feet of Sri Guru. Gaur Primadandi. Sri Sri Nitai Gauranga Ki Jai. Sri Rupanuga Guru Varga Ki Jai. 
Ananda Kodi Vaishnava Vrinda Kiya Samagata Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Kiya Nitai Gaur Prima Vrinda Kiya Mancha Kalpatita Vishya Krita Sindhu Vrinda Chapatita Vrinda 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 Vrinda